In this episode, we're going to take a look at a whole slew of updates that went live during the patch time today in Splinterlands, as well as a massive exploit that happened thereafter and what was done about it. To find out more information, just stand by. Hey all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here, bringing you a Splinterlands update. Please consider uh, leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. I would appreciate it. Okay, so I was going to start out and do a video today about spending glint and the cards I was going to buy. Um, spoiler alert, uh, I'm leaning towards epics now. But when I got home and checked out Discord, there was a slew of updates. Uh, some of this we knew and some of this we didn't know, but a lot of it we've been talking about for a while. Went live uh, in the patch today and I figured we'd talk about it. I, I usually make slides, but there was so much here that I didn't feel like sitting here for 45 minutes making slides. So what I did was I enlarged the text and as usual, um, if you wanna go ahead and read through it yourself, you can check in Discord. If you play Splinterlands and you're not a member of Discord uh, community, you should be. Okay, so let's check it out. Uh, what exactly went live today? Okay, so let's run through here. Um, we're thrilled to announce a brand new promotional event. Each month we'll be releasing new promo cards. Compete on the leaderboard for exclusive titles by purchasing the most cards during the event. For the full details, read the announcement here. This is what they announced uh, the other day, and we'll go over to the page. Um, but this is the new shops. These are the new cards, the legends. Uh, that they announced. Uh, I'm not going to go into details, but I will leave the link in the show notes should you want to go see them and you haven't uh, heard about them. But they are the new uh, cards that in, uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, obviously, they are meant to um, burn a lot of DEC. The basics are both can be bought for DEC. One's a legendary, one's a rare. For the max level uh, legendary, you're looking at 50,000 DEC per BCX times 11 to get a max. You're looking at 550,000 DEC for a max level of the legendary. And the, uh, the rare is 3,000 times, and what? Uh, that would be 115 BCX. So a max level legendary, uh, or a, the max level rare will be 345,000 DEC. So uh, either way, we're talking very expensive cards, but you can check them out and see what you think. Uh, some new powers involved. Um, also, uh, we have the uh, new shop uh, that just came out, or the new card that's available for vouchers. You have the Mana Warden. Um, it's 30 vouchers per BCX. And if you want a max level of him, that's 400 BCX. So you are looking at 12,000 uh, vouchers. So once again, a very expensive card. And all this will be burnt, so it's better for the tokens. But either way, I will let you decide. And you can check out that link in the show notes. Back to uh, the updates. Uh, voucher rework part two. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. Some of the changes went in um, last patch and the rest of them went in this patch um, so you can look at the past proposal we've talked about this before vouchers can no longer be used to purchase energy the wild pass or mage wagons big thing this past week was the new season went down and you no longer could uh, use vouchers to pay for that so the price of playing uh, in wild went up uh, somewhat and uh, vouchers can no longer be used for a discount on Rebellion Packs. The price of Rebellion Packs have been reduced from 5000 to 4000 So um, it doesn't quite equal out, but uh, I think uh, it, it was a good show of faith on the part of the team, uh, whereas they saw that the voucher discount was going away, so they reduced the cost of the card packs. These packs, uh, from uh, all intents and purposes, have not been selling a whole lot. But once again, uh, they will be totally gone in December uh, through the burn mechanism. So if you want some, you need to get them now. Otherwise, they'll be gone. Um, uh, um, here's a uh, big item that kind of slipped under the radar, but I want to make you aware of it. When sending vouchers to another player, you will incur a 12.5% burn fee. So keep this in mind. If you are transferring vouchers around from player to player, you're going to burn off a significant amount of them transferring them. So keep that in mind. 
Voucher pricing is now based on the in-game pool value instead of the tribal decks price. Keep in mind this whole idea is of these changes is to bring vouchers back into the game and off external sources. So you can transfer them into the game now, but you can't transfer them out. So the main uh, selling opportunity here or the, the main, um, if you want to buy some, you're going to have to buy some through the pool in-game now. So um, the, the voucher pricing is based on that in-game now, and they're you know moving to a place where hopefully everything comes back into the game uh, as far as vouchers go. Okay, a new DEC voucher liquidity pool is now available on the SPS voucher and SPS pools pages. Uh, we will take a look at that over here. So you can see that on this page here, we got a voucher tab now. And if you look at the get more uh, button, you can now here go here and exchange. You can swap. Um, and obviously you have to put in your fluctuation percentage here, whatever you want to deal with. And you can swap DEC for vouchers or you can look at the market tab. Okay. Once again, this is not supposed to be in depth. This is just supposed to be bringing this to mind if you hadn't heard of any of this. Um, a new exclusive tab has been added to the shop where you can spend vouchers on a new common card. This card will rotate out in three months when a new card becomes available. Um, that's what we just talked about, the Mana Warden. But we can jump back over here and we can go to the shop and you will see up here there is now an exclusive tab. Um, and you will see that the Mana Warden is here and uh, you have to have obviously have your vouchers in game to be able to use them. But you can select here how many BCX you want and then you can go ahead and um, uh, buy the amount of cards. Now, um, another thing while we're over here is that over here to the left, you can see that the Hall of Legends has been added. And these are the cards we were talking about earlier. Um, you can go in with 3000 um, DEC or 3,000 credits or 50,000 and 50,000 uh, per BCX of each of the card, whichever one you would like. Keep in mind that DEC is still significantly below par, so it's still cheaper to buy DEC and used for these cards. And that's part of the kind of um, hoped outcome behind selling them is burning a bunch of DEC, right? So we can see, let's do, do a, ref uh, a refresh here. We can see that SBS is still at, or uh, DEC is at 0.73. So it's still uh, a quarter below um, below par, right? So you're still better off using DEC. Okay, so with that said, we can keep rolling, uh, but keep in mind that uh, back on that voucher card that will be available for three months. After that, it's gone and there'll be a new one. So keep that in mind. Uh, some tech modernization notes, guild pages have been moved to the new client, including team creation for brawls. So you may see a little bit of difference there. You can now filter the main guilds list to only show guilds that are not currently full. So if you're looking for a new guild, that would help. Uh, on the main guilds page, hovering over the building level now shows the level for all guild buildings. So uh, a, a GUI improvement. Land updates, adding uh, added a warning when using delegated cards on land, ensuring you have enough grain if the rental delegation ends. That helps uh, those of us who, uh, if you happen to be in a situation where you uh, are shifting grain around to uh, have enough for your lands, um, I'm self-sufficient, so I have enough grain growing in each of my regions to be uh, keep everything good. But if you're shifting uh, shifting grains around to make those claims, that would help. Uh, fix sorting issues when hiding delegated cards during worker assignment if you have a large collection. Updated tooltips on locked cards to indicate the land staking cooldown. Um, general updates, the Splinter Storm skins, uh, these are the old set of skins has ended and the sale page has been removed, uh, obviously making room for the other tabs that were added. Rewards for the SPS uh, WETH pool have ended as per that proposal we talked about or um, maybe a week or two ago. Um, the SPS pools page now includes internal pools for vouchers and grain uh, with direct links for swapping in liquidity, which we looked at a few minutes ago. You can now enter tournaments directly for the main events from the main events page, the collection screen now defaults to the modern format, ensuring new players see their starter cards. So these are part of the new player experience changes. And yes, I know I'm running through this fast because there's a lot to run through. So in the comments, if you have any questions or if you want me to uh, look into anything and get back to you, go ahead and leave a comment or leave a comment on what you think of the changes that went in today. Okay, back to the changes, more changes. <laughs> 
Um, like I said, this team is continually up updating the game. So I'm not saying it's all roses. I'm saying that there is work being done on the game, and the game is being made better for all intents and purposes. Okay. Uh, let's see here. The filters collection, uh, the filters section on the collection screen can now be collapsed on desktop to show more cards at once. Gold foil cards now display the appropriate minimum level instead of de defaulting to level one. That's nice. The circulation of fully unbound cards is now displayed on the card details page, which is also nice. Added a countdown to the next price increase on the unbinding page, which will be helpful, uh, you know, going forward as the price increases. There's a countdown to show you how uh, how many days we have left. So I came over here on just a, a random soulbound card here uh, from that set, and you can see that um, they have timers here. Time until next price tier. So I have 10 days, 10 and a half days until the price increases to unlock this card. And then time left to unbind this card. I have 160, almost 161 total days before it becomes unable to be unbound. So that's what that means. Back to market and back to items buttons now consistently appear on card details pages. So basically a lot of this uh, are big changes, but it's improvement to the uh, the GUI, uh, improvement to the overall experience, uh, making it easier to look at things and make decisions. That's what I kind of uh, put this under kind of the umbrella. Added a secondary sort by card ID on the collection display after initial sorting by experience. The own section of the non-card market now includes a link for totem fragments to the combined fragments screen. Hive branding has been added to the main page, which was pretty apparent. They put it up here, and I noticed that they also changed the font on the Play Now button there, as well as design. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, obviously, Nate and his team worked on that. But uh, And then down at the bottom, they also said the... Uh, Powered by Hive, fast, feeless, seamless. Um, so I think that's uh, it, that points out one of the things I do like about Hive and I have liked about using it is the the no fees. <laughs> you know, uh, you, you don't really appreciate that until you jump over on the Ethereum chain and try to uh, play a game on that. So it is what it is. Okay. So um, let's see here. Uh, the site footer has been updated, removing most duplicate items from the top navigation bar. An academy panel has been added to the mana well. Let's check that out. Let's go over to the mana well. Uh, let's see here. Where's the academy panel? Okay, took me a minute to find it, but we're over here on the mana well page and up to the right, a very small icon. I think that that could be a little bit larger. Um, but uh, basically, just like on the other pages, it uh, once you click on it, it gives you all the details about everything on the page, which is a good thing. Uh, obviously, it falls under the umbrella of uh, new player experience or any player experience, uh, you know, especially when you're new, uh, finding out how what how things work and what they are, you know. So uh, a lot of things that uh, people that have been in the game for a while, it's just we just had to figure it out on our own, right? Um, Okay, so fixed issues with bridging SPS DEC after using the max button. More portions of the site now accessible to users who are not logged in, making it easier to share rewards or pack opening links. That's all nice. We looked through the Hall of Legends uh, screen. That's, that's the article about the new cards that are for sale. Once again, the link will be in the show notes if you want to check that out. Um, now, finally, this is the big news of the day. Really, and I think this falls under the umbrella of, uh, if uh, to say that there are always some people out there, and those some people are criminals that will take advantage of um, any opportunity given to them, uh, lawful or not. Okay, so let's just leave it at that. Okay, so let's read. I'm not going to read this whole uh, statement because you can go in and check it out yourself. It's in Discord and it's under the official announcements section. But let's just read some snippets from it. Earlier today, during the launch of our voucher liquidity pool, we, which we just talked about, we encountered a critical bug in our code, which you would have thought that they would have tested about 15 ways to Sunday uh, as it pertains to uh, one of the, uh, it pertains to vouchers and DEC, etc. Unfortunately, this bug caused an issue where instead of deducting vouchers from a user's account and sending them to the pool during a trade for DEC, the code was mistakenly deducting vouchers from the pool and returning them to the user. 
As a result, this exploit led to the overprinting of approximately 2 million vouchers, which were inadvertently sent to users. Additionally, due to this issue, we had to remain in maintenance mode for two hours, which, you know, if you were uh, midday here in the States, if you were wondering why the game was down for an extra long time, that's the reason. Uh, while we thoroughly reviewed all transactions to address, oh, man, that must have been a pain uh, to go through all the transactions. Uh, to address the imbalance, we deposited 721,930 and change vouchers from the Steam Monsters account and 62,205 and change vouchers from the Splinterlands account. Additionally, we printed 1,160,507 and change vouchers from a systems account to balance the pool. And then they give the link where you can uh, check that out. Uh, to rectify the situation, the Splinterlands company will be actively purchasing and acquiring vouchers and burning them into the land LP voucher debt account until the newly mounted, minted vouchers have uh, been paid back so there will be no unintended voucher inflation. I guess I am going to read this full thing because it all bears repeating. Unfortunately, at least one user took advantage of this exploit, converting the vouchers back to DEC. See, he knew... He or she knew exactly what they were doing. They grabbed, you know, the, the vouchers were refunded to them. And instead of just keeping the vouchers, they automatically sold them and converted them to DEC. And sending them back to the Hive Engine to get it off the game, to get it out of the control of uh, Splinterlands. Instead of holding tokens and working with our team, although the user contacted us after they had already exploited the bug and sold the tokens, so he got the vouchers, he or she got the vouchers, sold the vouchers to DEC, sent the DEC over to Hive Engine, and sold that. Quickly. Let that sink in. We want to stress that this behavior constitutes stealing from the company. Of course it is. I mean, there's no other way to explain that. And the player community is strictly against our terms of service. Uh, consequently, the user has been banned from using Splinterlands company products and services. I don't see any reason uh, against not just outright banning that person. If you think that that person should have been allowed to do that, leave your reasoning in the, sh the show comments. And I'll do another episode on that. And then uh, it goes on to say, we urge everyone in the community to report any bugs immediately and work with the team to resolve them rather than exploit them, which will typically result in a bug bounty being paid. Your cooperation is crucial to maintaining a fair and enjoyable gaming environment for all. This reminds me of a, radio, um, a news item I heard on the radio this morning where there was a glitch in Chase Bank's um, ATMs. And for some reason, people were allowed to withdraw thousands of dollars more than what was in their accounts because of a glitch in, I don't know, the software or whatever it was. And people did it. And in fact, they made videos and it went viral about people doing this. And it's like, that's fraud. That's bank fraud. Why are you putting yourself on it? And they, were, they, were, they titled it bank hack or whatever like that. It's not a hack. It's bank fraud. You're going to jail. Okay. I went off on a tangent. This has been Bronze Dragon. Hopefully you were not the one that took advantage of this and got banned. I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy. And I hope that, uh, you know, all these changes lead to a better game. I'll see you on the flip side.